What's going on guys? My name is Elden Hero and welcome to another video. It's not actually going to be a vlog the whole way through, I don't think, but the subject of this video is not actually my review of the movie Wonder Woman or even necessarily what I think of it. This video is going to be a rebuttal to this, which is uh, Camilla Long's review of the movie Wonder Woman, uh, in which she gave it a, a scathing review, and I am going to talk a little bit about why. Now, I bought this magazine, in fact I didn't buy it, I found it, um, but the original review is in the Sunday Times and it's behind a paywall. I'm not going to read out the entire review because I think that would be ridiculous if the original content is behind a paywall. But I am going to quote the relevant paragraphs and then give my opinion on them. It's not often I do this kind of video, but it's not often that I just get inspired by other people's writing. So um, I hope you guys like the video and uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, I mean sure, let me know. This video will contain very light spoilers for the movie Wonder Woman. Nothing that will ruin the movie for you. And if you have seen it, sure, all the better, uh, because that will help you decide whether or not you agree with me. So, Camilla Long's review of Wonder Woman, which is cleverly titled Heroine Withdrawal, opens up with the question, why does anyone think Wonder Woman is remotely feminist? She goes on to add, in fact, she is little more than a male bondage fantasy, trussed up in leather pants, skirt and sandals with indestructible bracelets that pretend to be weapons but are really just sexy roleplay manacles. Her principal device is not a sword or an axe, but an erotically charged leather lasso she uses to break men. Camilla continues, she does have a sword, but she isn't really allowed to use it, relying on pushing and shoving instead. Right. Well, aside from the fact that one of the most powerful scenes in this movie involves the shield, a scene where Wonder Woman does more work in one minute than the military could do in one entire year, the answer to the question, why does anyone think Wonder Woman is remotely feminist, depends on not the definition of the word feminist, but your perception of what feminism is. Personally, I don't really care about looking for feminist icons in movies. If they are there, then I'm happy to observe them, and if not, as long as the movie is good, I don't care. Some of my favourite characters in action movies could certainly be described as feminist icons. River Tam, Sarah Connor, Furiosa, but they're not necessarily heralded as such, because I don't think it really matters if it doesn't relate to the content of the movie itself. The definition of feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the ground of the equality of the sexes. If you observe the movie purely through this filter, I think it's plainly logical to say that this is a movie with a feminist message, or at the very least a feminist message of sorts. Camilla says in her review, it's just another rehash of the age-old male erotic fantasy featuring semi-naked but excitingly angry women repackaged for a new generation of domination-curious teenage boys. There is no obvious female audience, nor any new statement made by the practically invisible director, Patty Jenkins. Okay, so my immediate reaction to that is to ask for a movie where, aside from also starring in the movie itself, the director is not invisible. The director is supposed to be invisible. It's the director's job to direct the movie. And I happen to think Patty Jenkins did a really good job with this movie. The idea of there being no female audience, I, I don't know where you would get that from. There was a screening of this movie for only women, which was reported by every major news outlet, including the failing at NY Times. And women all across social media went crazy for this movie. There is a palpable female audience for this movie. I would even argue that this movie has breathed new life into a female cinema audience. I can't think of any other movie in history that had a female-only screening. Like, surely that speaks volumes about the level of fandom that exists in the female sex for this movie. Camilla continues her onslaught by adding, Diana Prince is not played by a proper actress, but by a breathtakingly gorgeous Israeli lingerie model. She can speak hundreds of languages, but can't tell jokes in any of them. She believes men are essential for procreation, but when it comes to pleasure, unnecessary. This is not a statement, but a sexy invitation, and in keeping with the paternalistic tone of the rest of the film. Okay, not played by a proper actress. So to be clear, Camilla Long is calling for a real feminist movie while simultaneously intimating that a woman cannot be a lingerie model and an actress at the same time, 
That does not sound like a very feminist message at all to me. In fact, I would argue that that's borderline misogynistic. Like, it's a statement that appears to imply that women should stay in their lane. I honestly cannot understand how someone can reconcile that mode of thinking with a rallying cry for feminism in movies. Also, the idea that she's really smart but can't also be funny is preposterous. The arc of a character who is close to God status in their homeland but struggles with emigration into a new time or a new world is actually a really common trope that's prevalent in many movies that have strong male characters. The best example of this is Thor, a mighty warrior and not to mention a freaking god. This guy doesn't know how to behave in a coffee shop and he tries to buy a horse in a pet shop. The struggle to adapt is there to point out the difference in culture and lifestyle, not to belittle the character's abilities or intelligence. It's certainly not another way that the patriarchy holds women back. This is the wrong movie if that's what you're trying to complain about. Lastly, I will just say that the scene in which Diana tells Steve that she believes men are solely for procreation and not necessary when it comes to pleasure is a moment that cements this movie's message as a feminist film. It is the ultimate statement of female independence and it could not have been more obvious unless she had waved her finger in front of Steve's face and said, I don't need no man. She disobeys men's commands at every turn and constantly saves the day while doing so, or at least, at the very least, improves their chances of conquest along the way. I don't know what a feminist movie is supposed to be, but surely there's a strong case for this being one of the leading ones in recent years. Anyway, that's the end of this video, because I'm not going to read the rest of the article, I just selected those paragraphs, not because they suit my agenda, but because the article is behind a paywall and I don't want to, like, be seen to be plagiarizing an article that people are supposed to pay for. I will link it in the description, if you happen to have a paid subscription to The Times, you can check out the rest of it. It doesn't get any better, and it does continue her strong, seemingly right-wing feminist message that, to be honest, I can't really make any sense of whatsoever. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. I've been El De Niro. Thanks for watching.